Hi, welcome and thank you so much for being here. We're going to do a timeless and collective reading. So whenever this reading finds its way to you is the right time. Keep in mind, it's a general reading. So see what signs, symbols, messages, and energies resonate for you in your particular situation and hopefully help bring you a little clarity on whatever you're wondering. It could broaden your perspective, narrow your focus, help you see something with fresh eyes in a new way, in a new light. But in the end, always trust yourself that divine inner guidance is inside of you and try to make balanced decisions between logic and intuition. So your decisions are sound based in love and for the highest and greatest good of everyone. So we're all uplifted in love. Let's begin. I have, um, I have you out here with Rose in the middle of the water in my big old waterproof bag. So let's start with the Gregory Scott Tarot. Get a little clarity on the energy going on right now for you guys. Let's see what God, Source, Holy Spirit, Christ Consciousness, or Higher Selves, Angels and Energies of Love, have for the highest and greatest good of all is the foundational energy to be aware of right now for the collective peace and thank you. Oh, so you got a you got somebody around you or this is you having a lot of confidence in a situation or finding their confidence again. The King of Wands. I feel like somebody is welcoming you. I feel like somebody has been welcoming you, uh, like wants to welcome your return or has been waiting for you. Um, I feel like somebody is like hosting something, but maybe you're going to visit someone or you have somebody coming to visit you. This is somebody who is like the rock star kind of energy. They just sort of exude this confidence. They shine. They are always up for a new adventure, to venture into new territory, to have some kind of new discovery. Um, sometimes it's a lot of knowledge in one particular area or like a lot of experience in one thing and they are like, the pro, the professional at something. And sometimes this is an energy that dabbles into a lot of different areas so they can have more of like an all around experience in many different things. Um, usually there's a lot of experience somewhere with this king. It can be a Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, like energy, it doesn't have to be. Um, I feel like somebody is presenting something though, but this king is coming down both with their crown on. So maybe this energy of like royalty, but upside down, it could be the energy of entitlement as well. But they have all of their armor on, which I'm not sure why. So maybe somebody still feels like even with this confidence, there is something that they are protecting. I'm getting that somebody feels like they want to roll out the red carpet for you or you are feeling like that for someone else. But let's take a peek at what this is upside down because it's like, it's like an exaggerated kind of confidence. It's someone who comes in all flashy, you know, with the fanciest car, but in, inside they're feeling super insecure about something. It's somebody who wants to be portrayed as uber confident, but they aren't always in that energy. When this person is in the upright energy, you just know they're confident. You don't um, really question the fact that they can handle what they say they can handle. So let's see what this energy is all about. The King of Wands. Tell us more about the King of Wands. Please and thank you. Oh, the King of Wands maybe is having a lot of comfort, confidence that came after a heavy situation. You got the tower. So sometimes this king has had all kinds of experiences, big tower moments and being at the top of his or her game, like really having the kingdom flow and flourish and thrive. But tower situations happen to help you adjust something, to see how you can rebuild something. Also to see where is the right foundation, setting, place, environment, partnership to build. Sometimes, I don't know, I'm kind of getting that this king may have had a situation recently or in the past, or maybe even going on right now, 
or maybe it is that lack of confidence energy because they're not quite sure how to restructure or redo something. But I feel like this king is flipping back upright pretty fast to recognize how something had to go away because it was wobbling for a long time. Something wasn't built on a right foundation or something wasn't growing anymore. Usually I get with the, with the tower that it's a divine energy or outside force that comes through and pushes that tower over because there is meant to be either a different dynamic to rebuild because something wasn't, it, was, it had like loose screws in it, you know, it wasn't built with the right tools or it needs to be completely done, be rebuilt somewhere else. You're meant to be somewhere else. Therefore that divine push comes to get you somewhere else. But I'm getting that whatever situation this is, whether it's a partnership or um, for some of you, it could even be like a business situation. But I, I'm getting that you're gonna start from ground zero and do it in a different way. I'm getting that this king pushed the tower over, not that the tower fell. So that's sort of what I see. Sometimes it takes a lot of confidence to know that something was wobbly, to know something wasn't working and to be the one to push something over. And then you have to, when you see all that rubble, all that mess, you do have to clean up the mess and have that responsibility. But it's also recognizing that it's like dumping out the empty weird drawer you have. You see all that mess there. But once you see what you don't need anymore, what you see has been sitting there for 10 years and you've never used, what you forgot that you had, that key that you lost, that thing that was in that drawer for the whole time, you can organize something, see it all in front of you, and really, um, like you keep what you need, you get rid of what you don't, and you have new space for something new to come in. I am getting that that king maybe pushed something over or something out of his or her life so that there could be a little bit of a mess of rue that has to be cleaned up so that something can be more open for new energy to come in. So let's see. It could also be that if that um, king's confidence was knocked down by any outside sources, that that king is getting right back like right back up you know maybe it did take a little while but I feel like once he or she stands right up that confidence comes back full force um let's see clarity on that tower what's the tower all about usually the tower is also something that happens pretty fast and sudden it could also be a tower moment on internal energy like an internal tower how somebody internally sees and feels about a situation and that just changes like that because of something. Clarity on number 16, Major Arcana, the tower, please and thank you. What is that tower all about? The tower is about how to have peace restored. Also how to not have to go to bed with the big old armor on because I feel like with that four swords upside down that's where you always went to bed with the that heavy armor on and how uncomfortable that would be so the rebuilding is what restores peace restores comfortable sleep brings you back into the energy of meditation contemplation but really receiving intuition on how to find maybe a peaceful solution or resolution to a situation. It's interesting, these cards are different. It's the four swords, but I feel like maybe before the clock was ticking. Usually this person is in really comfortable sleep and it almost looks like they're awake and looking at something that had to be done. Or waking up with the realization that there was a situation that was stuck because it looks like this person is not comfortable like they're kind of tied down in a situation so maybe something had to come through to be the divine untying of a situation for release to reconnect with confidence to see how to rebuild something where it didn't feel like you always had these straps on or something weighing you down 
you have the swords right here that can unbind you. This is a really unusual energy for the Four of Swords, but I like that they're different because I'm getting different messages with them. I feel like your tools were right here all along to release a situation. Maybe somebody had to come along and provide help for this. Maybe that was you, or maybe that was somebody who just had to have the confidence to know they could do it. I hear the time, the time is now. Maybe it wasn't the right timing before. Let's get more clarity. What is um, the energy of that Four of Swords all about? I'm getting that with his like, <laughs> with, this, with this guy's like open chest here, that it had to be the right time for someone to open their heart, but maybe that had to happen from a divine intervention sort of situation. Tell us more about the Four of Swords, please, and thank you. What you doing, Nose? What you doing, babe? Oh, we have another king. We have the King of Pentacles coming through. So these could be two different people. It could be a King of Pentacles energy that came through and helped this person get their confidence back. Or these could be two facets in one person. Because if this is the fire of the soul and the expansion kind of energy and adventure, but that adventure could never have because somebody was tied down, the King of Pentacles knows how to manifest, how to rebuild anything that happened to fall in the past. This King of Pentacles has so many different experiences. He or she has probably had to rebuild many different times, but they have to be realistic about what they see and what they can do with their energy and how to solve problems and be adjustable because I think of them as also sensual, touchy. They have to know what they can put their hands into and will build and what is the wrong tool to use. This is somebody who knows how to manifest, how to have long-term stability. Sometimes this king has to learn how to follow through. They got the passionate plans, they got the big adventures and the experiences, but sometimes they let that fire fizzle away or have too many fires going on. This king is strong, stable, secure, and knows how to keep something like um, long lasting. They look to the long-term goals and don't get too overwhelmed in the small little situations that happen along that journey. Also, this king upside down can be very egotistical, very worried about what the neighbors think, what the people they work with think, what everyone else thinks. Being seen with the big toys and tools. <laughs> and like kind of always finding that next goal, thinking that's gonna fulfill them. And it's never the outside thing that fulfills them, it's always the internal thing, that internal happiness, that internal drive, and that truth to really pursue and have things in their 3D every, everyday world that they love, that they enjoy. It's also knowing that if they wanna have a really big boat, and they get that boat, but it's sitting in the garage for 20 years and they never take it out. How is that gonna bring the joy? To look at it and to polish it and to never use it? Or is it maybe to go fishing, which they have dreamt of forever? So this king does have to learn how to have balance in his or her everyday life. So there's both time to work and both time to play because that king can overwork be so focused on money or the goals of, or obtaining something that it's always like, no, they'll really go after their passionate truth or what they desire once they have this thing set in stone. Instead of sometimes just saying, be spontaneous, do it now. A fish just jumped. <laughs> that is so cool. This is a spontaneous king. This is the planning king. There has to be maybe a merge of these two energies. Clarity for the collective, please and thank you. Let's get one more and then let's do some oracle cards. What else? 
to be helpful for the collective to know on the King of Pentacles, the King of Wands, the Tower, and the Four of Swords. Please and thank you. And then we have the Five of Cups. So I'm going to look at that too. And you got the Fool. So I do feel like with this Tower, with maybe this energy of non peaceful situations in the past, that is what's changing. It's even finding peace in loss. This is that energy when the tower falls and you see all that rubble to clean it up. Sometimes the five of cups comes through and it is truly a loss. It is something that went away. It's something that didn't work. It's something that is not there anymore or wasn't handled correctly. And there's always that like internal desire. You wish it could have been done a different way. You wish this would have happened instead. You wish blah, blah, blah. So sometimes you do have to actually go through the energy of mourning a loss. And it is truth and it is deep and it is real and it is life. So it could have been that this is loss of maybe a business that you thought would really flourish. It could be the loss of a partnership. It could be the loss of maybe a home that was being built for a long time, loss of a dream, anything. But to stand in the rubble and to look at that loss forever and not recognize that you have something that can still fill up, that you do have more possibilities that can bring more abundance in your life, that any loss you went through comes in to open a door, to open a window, to bring you a different blessing, to bring you healing, to bring you strength, to recognize what you have new or coming back when it comes in, and truly cherishing that moment, that person, that place, that thing. Um, I'm getting to maybe not take something for granted. So sometimes it's not so big of a deal, but you do have the tower. Sometimes that Five of Cups energy is just like crying over spilled milk. You know, something didn't work, but instead of just picking it up, cleaning it up, moving along, someone gets lost in that energy so much that they start to miss some blessings that are around them. So it does look like whatever somebody went through, I am getting with both of these kings, they're strong energies and they're mature. And they've been been around the bend or like been <clears throat> through, through scenarios, situations, experiences in their life. That's why they're the kings or the king. This could be, by the way, a Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus-like energy, or maybe someone just has fire and earth in their chart. But you don't just get to be the king without any experiences. But how you deal with the new ones that come through or how you reflect upon them in the past is where the growth and the strength comes from. I just heard not getting wrapped up in the details. But it looks like whether this is one person or people working together, these it doesn't matter what gender are. This could be a couple. But it's both in their masculine energy, both in the energy that they are going to do something, pursue something, provide for something, handle something, both having this sense of independence and control, but not over control, otherwise it's here. And it looks like there is a new start. Also for some of you, maybe one of these is a person from your past, one is a person for your future. It looks like your future involves a leap of faith, a brand new start, and starting on that clean slate, beginning in new territory or with an overall new energy and a new perspective on something. The fool's beautiful, but it's not being a dumbass. It's being a prepared fool, <laughs> you know? It's knowing from your past experiences what you will or won't do. When you feel <clears throat> a situation, excuse me, I'm clearing my throat, which usually means someone is having to, uh, a little trouble speaking. But it's being clear if you go into that dark woods and you realize when you went halfway through that woods in the past and you needed your flashlight because it got really dark, 
you take the flashlight next time. You've learned from that past mistake. Or you know if there's so many prickers in that woods that you got all scratched up and that is not the territory you need to go. You need to go the long way around the mountain and bring a tent so you can camp halfway there. This is just like a metaphor kind of energy, but like you, you learn. Or you put on your big old armor here and you go through that shortcut, but you do it with the right protection, with the right, you know, preparation so you can get through it. Bruce, sit down, babe. I'm getting itchy. But it does require a leap of faith. And this brings you to a brand new chapter, a brand new start, a brand new journey. And it does take some strength. Hi, Rose. She is wanting some attention, babe, don't you? Can you sit down for me? And then we'll go swimming. Yeah. Let's get you a spirit message. Let's get one message see what's going on right now. The message for the collective, please, and thank you. These tiny little letters. Let's see what it says for you guys. Lear wow. Learn to ride the waves of life. The big ones, the little ones, you know, instead of letting those waves always slap you in the face or push you over like that tower energy. It's sometimes going with the flow of the changes that happen. Sometimes changes happen in our life we do not understand when we are in the rubble. We understand later when we look back how it brought us so, to someplace different. It brought us a new knowing about ourselves. Ride the waves of life when faced with difficult times, whether that be a little situation that's a loss, a long situation that there has to be healing and true mourning from or a big situation that is no longer there but it's bringing you that brand new start a new chapter that you get to do something a different way now you can either fight against the current or go with it so ask yourself what is to be gained by depleting your energy fighting against it don't do that to yourself if you are in a constant battle and you are going to bed constantly feeling like you have this armor on or in a situation where you always have to have your armor on, you might need to be the one to change that situation, to change yourself. If you always feel like those waves are really big. But if you find the right way to ride the waves, to go with the flow, sometimes it's the path of least resistance that takes you down the stream the right way. I also see for some of you, it's kind of like I see an undercurrent, or let's just say it rained here and this curtain is really high and I needed to get to shore over there to ground something, to ground myself on the earth. <laughs> to take a moment. Sometimes going the direct way across is gonna be really hard, but if you go that diagonal way, you're still kind of going with the flow, but you're going a different direction. You're kind of going the side way. So it might be that you have to sort of maneuver yourself a different angle to your situation than you saw before. And that will get you grounded. That will get you movement. That will take you where you need to go. But for some of you, you need to take that big ass leap of faith here and just dive on in and body wave that, that wave as far as it takes you. And just trust that maybe the shore you end up on is the right shore or maybe just it's about the journey and enjoying that that moment when you are riding that wave so let's see hi rose i know i know babe can you sit babe let's do one mystic red rose it is one mystic red rose message to bring a little more clarity to the situation please and thank you to clarify all of this energy please and thank you. coffee cup so what you need to know I'm gonna show you this too I put this upright so this might be a soulmate situation but 
right now, what's gonna heal, what's gonna help, what's gonna move you forward, what's gonna help you ride that wave is speaking, having a moment. I actually see like coffee, like I, I just think about that morning, like first sip -a -roo of coffee and it's so good. And sometimes you get to the end of the cup and it's not quite as good as that first sip. So I do see you as getting to savor something. Maybe this is gaining clarity between you and someone else. Um, maybe this is even a text conversation, but I feel like if, even if it's a text kind of conversation, it takes you to face-to-face um, -face interaction. It's meeting and talking, it's savoring the moment, and it's feeling elevated and building a friendship. So maybe this is a new friend that comes in. Maybe you talk about past experiences. Maybe, I mean, I feel like this king or this king energy would really inspire and get somebody excited about something that they could build and make last. And this king might help really put a solid foundation and energy onto all these ideas that maybe just fizzled away before. How to make that fire brighter and bigger and like everlasting. So maybe it's a really good conversation. This could be just somebody you run into. I feel like if you run into somebody when you're out and about, you sort of take it farther than just like, hey, how are you doing? I think it's more like, are you doing anything right now? Like, no, I'm not really doing I have like a couple hours free. Like, there's a coffee shop. You want to go hang out? And it goes farther. If this is someone that you do just meet, I feel like you are making plans for the future. This is feeling elevated. So whatever comes through in this conversation, whatever you talk about, whether it's past situations or maybe how much healing has happened or how much growth has happened because of past situations, how somebody is maybe not so restricted anymore, bringing peace and almost like a forgiveness energy because this in some decks means truths, you know, where you kind of just lay everything out on the table and just kind of get to see it all there for what it is. I feel like whatever is revealed here, the truth is easier to just know than anything that was maybe hidden under, under the table or unsaid before. So I feel like you're gonna hear something that was maybe unsaid but felt in the past. So, and then I did look at this. So we do have soulmates. So you do have a partnership. Soulmates can come into our world in so many forms. They can be a best friend, um, it can be a family member, it can be a child, it can be a lover, it can be a coworker. It's just, when it's a true soulmate, it's an energy of instant recognition of souls. And it's somebody that comes into your life to help aid. And I heard, I just heard sponsor. <laughs> it's really a weird way to see that. Maybe sponsor, maybe somebody's sponsoring you. Maybe somebody's giving you a grant or something like that. That can be a soulmate. Someone that comes into your world, sees your potential in something, offers you, I see like a grant for, um, I don't know, something you can go learn, maybe a scholarship or to travel or something like that. It was such a different message to come through. But that person could be like your soulmate. They see your potential, they have something to offer, to give. They see the passion in you. They see, I don't know, how can even give you some more freedom with something. And that person can feel like such a blessing in your life. Sometimes soulmates come in our life and it's not an easy situation. It's a rough, hard cycle that we have to learn from in a lesson. But it's still something that comes into your life that was meant to be and elevates us. It is a partnership. It's a soul contract. And for some of you, this is a life partner. I mean, if this is one energy, it doesn't matter what the gender is. This is somebody that would always really be kind of passionate, get you excited, be spontaneous, think of all kinds of interesting things to do. But somebody that's going to stick around and is long-lasting and really giving some kind of offer that is for life where they don't have the intention of going anywhere. So you do have some kind of soul connection coming through, whether that's a new friend or life partner or maybe somebody coming back. Maybe it's a friend you haven't seen in a really long time. But I do feel like there's some kind of instant connection. So either maybe you guys have lived at different parts of the world forever and you come back, and it's like no time went by. Or it could be 
you and someone else have been on different ends of the earth and somehow you come through, a tower moment happens, your worlds collide and you got this new person in your life that is so amazing. It is like you've always known each other and you were meant to come together. Sometimes that's a great situation. Sometimes people find each other in weird situations that had to happen because that was what brought you together. So let's see. What else do I have? I have the mermaid. So let's do one mermaid message. What's one mermaid message to be helpful for the collective right now? Please and thank you. Clarity on coffee cup soulmates. Five of Cups, Four of Swords, King of Wands, and King of whoop, King of Pentacles. A message to bridge all this together. Ooh, well, we do have a lot of the true. <laughs> we do have a lot of masculine energy going on right now. So there is a lot of masculine in your life you're thinking about coming into your world, or this is truly tapping into the masculine in you regardless of your gender. This is that pursuing energy, that providing energy. It's the, the yang energy. So I feel like this particular masculine energy is elevating. We did have a message of like feeling elevated here. And open. And also really strong. It looks like this particular merman kind of has a shark's fin, which always makes me think of an ancient animal. Sharks have like really been around a long time. Like it makes me think of dinosaurs. So maybe this is an ancient old soul. Somebody that feels like an old soul, but this is honoring the masculine. I feel like it's either you taking charge or you allowing somebody else to take charge. That was a really loud bird. Maybe that was <laughs> whatever I just said. It's um, respecting men and embracing the masculine divine. We do feel like in order for masculine or feminine to really go into that divine energy, you have to go through some things. You have to have experiences that do elevate your soul. So I am getting that somebody, didn't I see somebody like with that confidence, wanting to roll out the carpet, wanting to take care of someone, wanting to take charge of something, wanting to, I'm also getting, have this freedom to expand. It's also a 10, that's like the wheel of fortune energy. So let's maybe do one. I have this other tarot deck. So let's do one more tarot card just to either bring a deeper message and or bridge all of this energy together. What is one more message that needs to be um, heard or what is something to bring a deeper understanding of all this energy happening right now, all this masculine energy. I just heard men at work and I don't know why and I don't know if that's a band. I don't know if that's a band. Men at work. I think it might be. Maybe it's about men at work together or, or someone you work with or it's about getting to work. Um, and then <laughs> and I heard, um, what is the Shania Twain song? Man, I feel like a woman. That was so weird to come through. Go girl, or whatever she says, <laughs> go out. So maybe it is a balance between masculine and feminine, or the masculine and you. But if you are always in a masculine energy and you do have a masculine energy around you that is wanting to come in and provide and take that leadership kind of masculine role on, maybe you need to have that feminine energy to allow that to happen. 
one message, please and thank you. Ooh, we got another king. There is a lot of masculine energy coming through. Oh my goodness. So you, you now have the king of swords, the king. We're just missing the king of cups here. But I mean, I would say this one looks pretty open hearted and definitely in the water like the big old king of cups. So we're going to give him that role and say there's a really nice foundational overall energy of masculine energy here. Now the king of swords. Here it looks like a business guy, but he's holding his, I don't know. I mean, it looks like a statue, but it also looks like justice. So maybe this is the logical side on how to bring justice or balance back to a situation. The King of Swords is very intelligent, very smart, if upright, very open-minded, because they want to have all the information to be able to be flexible to change their mind when they get the information in. Um, sometimes this King can be close-minded, if they only see something in a certain way through that tunnel vision or it's only ever happened if they're selfish if it's like a selfish energy and they have their plan their way of doing something and they can't see coloring outside the lines as possibly something that could be beautiful then they're gonna stay within those lines but it's always it's not gonna expand in the way where if they put their little creative hat on Upright, I feel like this, even though it's the King of Swords and it's a logical kind of energy and, um, you know, it's, it's mental activity. When this person lets their mental activity involve both hemispheres of the brain and tap into creativity and open, being open hearted, there is no end to what they can create or what they can think of, ideas that they can have, plans that they can make and putting those plans into action to put into reality and grow. But it looks like this is somebody who's kind of in charge of a situation. I feel like this is somebody who wants to bring back in balance. I'm just getting that this is one person with an overall divine energy. It could be for some of you a couple different people in your lives and they all have different kind of facets of a masculine form, you know, that all work together. But I'm getting that a lot of this is comboing together. So this could be somebody that it could be like a Gemini Libra Aquarius like energy let's see what it says it says ethics over emotions somebody who does the right thing to do the right thing but they always feel like they're lacking a little if they're not involving their heart when this king uses the truth of his or her heart in combination with those ethics because it's now through authenticity of what they believe then that's when their decisions are super balanced. If this person is upside down, it is emotions over ethics is where, I mean, that's kind of like the king of cups a little bit. It's where they're only thinking about how they feel about something and not being logical. You have to have both. It has to be the balance. So I guess the king here in this deck should be like this. Not necessarily like this or like this, but sometimes you have to flip this coin around to see things different ways at a different angles to find out what is the balance on that scale balance between the heart and the head so that you see something from the higher perspective as above tapped into spiritual energy and how to ground it on earth also as within so without because the reflections and the things you think of and you see and how you feel vibrate out there and that's what you're attracted to or it's attracted back to you in the world so let's get uno mas from the universe um this one's the notes from the universe on love and connections so i hope this reading was helpful for you guys i hope something sometimes it's just one little message that brings you the clarity that you needed sometimes the whole thing makes sense sometimes it makes no sense at all but maybe it slips in later and you're like hmm, no well now that can kind of make sense so always just take what resonates for you also i'm going to still be um continuing that contest if you want a free reading just put an emoji of your choice 
in the um, comments and I'll enter you into the list I already have going on. And it just, um, I just feel like it's something kind of cool where I can give back. And let's do one more overall message for the collective. Season. Thank you. I think it's getting a little bit darker out. <laughs> Rose and I are going to be swimming through some dark water. Although it's cooled off a little, which is really nice. It was really hot today. Where's one more message for the collective? Season. Thank you. Yeehaw! Yeah! Yeehaw. I did see like Shania Twain. Maybe I'll find some country songs to put in the in the playlist for you. If you guys have any country, I don't know that much. I know some of the like the little bit older country stuff. But if any of you have some really good, maybe new country songs or old, doesn't matter. I love all music. Maybe put that in the in the um, in the uh, comments for me. Also, if any of you ever have any songs that come through and. Um, I can't, like, as long as I can and I have room, <laughs> sometimes my lists are pretty big and I have no more room in my description, but I love when you guys add to my playlist. I hope you guys also enjoy the playlist that I put. I feel like it's a whole extra reading you get of energy of music when this reading is done that you get to listen to. It's like your continuation of energy. And I always find that there are deeper messages in a lot of the music. Sometimes I have tons of songs that come through and sometimes it's just one or two, but when I go and watch the video to get those one or two other things pop through. So that's how you see the extra stuff that comes in. But I'm always open to suggestions. I know you guys have um, all kinds of tastes and styles and likes of music and I love good music and I think it's meant to be shared and loved. So that's why I always share music. When it comes to choosing who will be in your life, I recommend valuing their yeehaw. <laughs> it's telling you if you, some of you, I will say, if you, some of you are making a choice between, you know, different people or thinking about different people that you connect to. The biggest message that's coming through at the end is to go with the one that gives you the yeehaw. Like a little bit of that diving into, you know, your, your willing and always wanting and desiring to take that leap of faith with that yeehaw energy, quality above all others. So maybe it's not about logic. Maybe it's not all about your emotion. Maybe it's the one that lights that fire in your soul. Have it your way. Special orders don't upset us, the universe. But what lights the fire in your soul? is personal to you. You know, everyone's different. For some, it is that <laughs> mental stimulation that like really lights it up. For some, it's the, you know, the physical dependency, the stability. For some, it's that adventure, enthusiasm that gets them going. For some, it is where it's warming your heart and opening your, and your up your emotions, <coughs> making you feel vulnerable and safe. All of us have different wants and desires and likes. So see who brings out the facets in you that give you that reflection that feels like love overall. <laughs> love in all areas. And with this, I bid you do. I love you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day, evening, night. Um, Rose and I are going to take a big old plunger brew <laughs> down the river and go sideways to get out. And with this, I bid you do. I love you so much. I will see you soon. 